Welcome back. Um, I am very happy to introduce new lecture series on reinforcement learning. So basically, reinforcement learning is a type of machine learning, right? Machine learning has three types of strategies, supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. So in supervised learning, the learning algorithm is provided with a labeled data set where each input is paired with a corresponding correct output, which is called label. And the goal is for the model to learn a mapping from inputs to outputs that generalizes well to new unseen data. For example, in image classification, the model is trained on labeled images to predict the correct category for new images. So, um, on the other hand, if we consider supervised learning, the algorithm is provided with unlabeled data and the goal is to discover hidden patterns or structures in the data. And common tasks can include, for example, clustering, grouping similar data points together. And in unsupervised learning, there is no notion of rewards or specific tasks. The focus is on understanding the data structure without explicit feedback. Um, from that regard, um, reinforcement learning represents a different paradigm from both supervised and unsupervised learning in machine learning. In reinforcement learning, it is unique in that it requires an agent to learn from direct interaction with an environment rather than from a static data set. This characteristic makes reinforcement learning suitable for real-world applications such as robotics, self-driving cars, autonomy uh, that require continuous adaptation. So I tried to summarize this uh, briefly for you. So for supervised learning, you learn from a labeled data, as I just described. In supervised learning, you learn from unlabeled data. So you need to discover hidden patterns. And supervised learning, you need to predict output based on the input. For example, right, um, you learn, for example, in image processing, you, I, give you, I give the algorithm some cat pictures, and when there's a new cat picture, it finds. However, in unsupervised learning, it clusters basically cat-like pictures um, under the same tag. And supervised learning is based on drag feedback, unsupervised learning, no feedback. I mentioned these examples. And supervised learning focuses on prediction tasks. Unsupervised learning discovers patterns. In reinforcement learning, as I mentioned, I'm just summarizing, bear with me one more second. You learn through interacting with an environment. You would like to maximize a cumulative reward through actions. Um, feedback is indirect. Basically, the feedback, like the supervised learning, will not tell you your action is good or bad, but it will provide you a reward or penalty for you to improve your actions as time progresses. And some examples I gave these two, maybe game playing. And the focus of the main focus of core focus of reinforcement learning is decision making and autonomy, which is the field I do research. And um, if you basically would like to learn machine learning for decision making and autonomy, you are on the correct video, you are on the correct lecture series on reinforcement learning. All right, so this is um, this figure, let's look at this figure. So there is an agent, there is an environment, and there is a reward function block. Basically, let's start with an agent. So agent basically observes the current state of the environment. Based on this state, it takes an action that changes the environment, right? Like think about robot go left or right. Then there is a reward function. That reward function looks at agent's action and the state 
provides a reward to the agent. I am calling this reward, but it can be positive or negative. Sometimes it is called positive reward, negative reward, or just reward error or penalty. And then based on this reward, agent uses this feedback, reward feedback to improve future actions. And the goal is to maximize cumulated rewards over time. Um, let's look at this uh, robot navigation problem in a, um, a 4x4 environment having obstacles, basically these two uh, parts. The states are right, states are um, Y and X. Robot is currently at 1-1 one, one state, 1-1 one, one state actions. Um, it can go up, down, left and right. And the reward mechanism can be as simple as, you know, minus one for every action it takes. It is just to minimize the energy, right? The goal is to take the robot reach from here to this purple state, so-called the goal state or the terminal state. And reaching to ter that terminal state is 10 points. And if you hit an obstacle, you get minus five negative reward or penalty, minus one for every action it takes. So basic robot will learn, tries to find the shortest path in this case, since we are penalizing for the every unnecessary, basically every unnecessary action it takes, right? Robot, if robot comes here, then goes up, does this behavior, then eventually reaches. Since we are going to reward these unnecessary actions with minus one penalty, over time, robot will learn not to do such actions. And this is the basic, yeah, I mean, we have, we have in reinforcement learning, environment has some states, agent applies some up, down, left, right actions, and reward mechanism will determine, will provide a feedback for robot, for agent to improve its behavior over time. All right, so um, what we are going to learn throughout this course. First of all, reinforcement learning is based on to understand the theory. We need to understand Markov decision processes. We're going to talk more about it in the next lectures. And then we are going to learn dynamic programming. Dynamic programming is like, you know, in the dynamic programming, we are going to assume um, we know the environment, right? So we are going to optimize the behavior of the agent with respect to a known environment. And with this, basically it is called model-based approach since we know the environment, we know the model. Based on these assumptions, we are going to learn Q function and the Bellman equation. And then we are going to learn Q function iteration. This is this will be you know this dynamic programming part again. We are going to assume the environment is known. Then what happens if the environment is unknown? Then this is exactly where reinforcement learning um, comes to the picture, right? We do an action, observe what's going on in the environment, then we correct our action to improve ourselves. So reinforcement learning Q function concept will be replaced with Q learning. We are going to talk about exploration versus exploitation. Basically, exploration here is trying new actions to discover their effects. And exploitation is using known information to maximize your existing rewards. We are going to discuss all the details when we uh, dive into the details. And then we are going to learn basically off policy versus on policy learning. Um, simply on on policy learning, you are learning from what you are doing right now. Um, basically, uh, what you do, let's say, sometimes you throw the ball with your right hand, which is your, let's say, strong hand as compared to left. And sometimes you try with your left hand, not as good for you. How you learn is you learn from whatever you are doing at the moment. If you throw with your right hand and make the basket, you learn that using your right hand works. If you throw with your left hand and miss, you learn that your left hand isn't good. This is the own policy learning. 
The off policy learning basically is learning the best way, even if you don't always do it. Uh, let's consider the same example throwing uh, ba at the ball, and you know your right hand is good. Basically, even when you throw with your left, you learn as if you, ha you had used your right hand, because that's the best way for you. So, if you basically, you know, off policy, you can try different throws, but you always learn the best throw right hand, even if you don't use it every time. Um, so basically, what I am trying to say is, even though you are sometimes using your left hand, the computer in your brain is keeping track of the best way you throw, which is your right hand, and learning how to improve that best way. So even if you throw with your left, your brain is updating the knowledge of how to throw with your right hand, because that's the best throw you want to master. So, um, of policy, learning the best way, even if you don't always do it. On policy, learning from what you are doing right now. And then, uh, after that, we are going to learn reinforcement learning in continuous spaces. Basically, when the time comes, it will be more clear, or if you have some knowledge, prior knowledge about reinforcement learning, you know I'm talking about the Q-table. Q-table is like um, a table that... Um, stores the value of you know the rewards and then um, you can choose the best action based on that Q table but it is let's say N by M or you know it's a table it is kind of discrete in that sense so reinforcement learning in continuous spaces requires approximation of the Q table using neural networks we're gonna talk about neural networks approximations neural network Q learning again off policy and on policy, we are going to learn a trick so-called dimension scaling and experience replay, among other approaches we may explore. And we are going if you are familiar with my other playlists, we are going with examples with cause. So if I cover a theory, then I that I will be able to do a MATLAB session. I will provide the exact code so that you can take it and use it for your research. I am going to provide every part of the code so that you know you, you won't be relying on some toolboxes or some other sources. You are going to have the codes at the end of these lecture or example uh, videos. All right. Well, most of the material that I will present is, is based on this awesome book. Um, when I was learning reinforcement learning, I resorted to a lot of textbooks and this one worked best for me, maybe because my background is more like feedback controls, autonomy person, not like computer science. So this is basically, if you type this um, web page, you are going to get uh, from the authors, one of the authors is basically website you are going to get the free version of this book. So that's great. So uh, again, I'm going to explain all the, all the principles in my videos, but if you would like to dive more in detail, if you understand, if you would like to understand more, uh, the book certainly has more, but in these videos, I will basically cover what I you know, use in my daily autonomy or decision-making research and um, you are going to get the most important and useful um, reinforcement learning strategies. As this being said, this was the first video. Thanks for watching. Hit a like, subscribe. Um, otherwise, um, uh, other than that, see you next time. Take care.